lovely humans and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video we are doing a super fun DIY that I kind of came up with on the fly but to be totally honest I am thrilled with the results. Every once in a while I go to a craft store and this last week it happened to be Hobby Lobby and I kind of just wander around and look for ways to be inspired for more DIYs for you guys and to fill my never-ending need to craft. Because I have this innate need within me to create things every once in a while and it was time. It was time y'all because it's been a hot minute since we did a DIY. So in Hobby Lobby I actually stumbled across this entire aisle of stained glass. And I picked one of the sheets up and I thought, oh my goodness, this looks a lot like marble. Like, wait a minute, what if I could figure out how to cut this? Because they've got cutters right there. What if I can make escort cards out of this? And you guys, I made marble look like escort cards all by my big girl self and you can too. Oh my goodness, I am so smitten with how these turned out and I cannot wait to share everything with you guys. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. First up, supplies. You're going to need a sheet of stained glass in here. Obviously, I have two different options. A glass cutter, which I picked up at Hobby Lobby, some glass cutting oil, and a Sharpie to mark where you're going to make your cuts. I also happen to use a metal T-square for straight lines, but you could use a ruler instead if that's what you have. Next, one of the most important things you're going to need are clamps to hold your straight line in place when you're cutting and a handy dandy little brush because there will be glass shrapnel that you're gonna wanna be able to sweep up. And don't forget your fabulous eyewear because we're working with glass and we wanna make sure your eyeballs are nice and safe. Now I'm gonna set down my sheet of glass and mark out where I'm making my cuts. I've already decided that I want to have each escort card be two inches by three inches. Grabbing my T-square and my clamps, I go ahead and clamp it in place to make sure I'm getting a nice, clean cut. Be sure to take your time doing this. Don't rush it. Trust me, I've tried rushing it and it didn't go well. Next, grabbing your glass cutter, you're going to want to slowly but firmly apply pressure and you're going to hear kind of like a zipping noise, dragging the blade all the way across the sheet of glass. Loosen your clamps carefully. Pick up your sheet of glass and then simply apply pressure and pop, there it is. A perfect little cut. Look at that baby. Look at that baby. Now I'm going to do it all over again to get myself another nice clean row. Now for this one, I didn't secure one of the clamps as properly as I should have and you're about to see what happens when you don't take your time securing it. There it is, it just pops right off. And when I go to break it, we don't get a clean cut. So this is why I say definitely take your time when applying the clamps because now I have this extra little edge that I have to break off with pliers, which is not impossible, it's just an extra step and had I taken my time to clamp it better, I wouldn't have to do this. Now I'm going to take one of the rows and cut it into individual escort cards. Measuring out three inches, six inches and nine inches, I get ready to make more cuts. Again, taking my time with the clamps, I'm time-lapsing this, you don't have to see exactly how long it took me, but trust me, it took me a while. But once you get the hang of it, honestly, it tends to start feeling pretty speedy. You just wanna make sure you're not clamping down too hard because you don't wanna put too much pressure on the glass. And again, picking up the glass, simple pressure, and it breaks right off. Now I will say that there is a learning curve to this. I had one sheet that I considered my test sheet and not everything worked out well. I found that the secret was really and truly making sure those clamps were super secure so that my straight line didn't move, otherwise I'd get jagged cuts. Instead of handwriting on these, I decided to use my Cricut machine because as you guys know, I'm not a huge fan of my own handwriting. So instead, we're using the Cricut because I just love how easy it is to use and how professional it looks when it's all done. If you guys wanna see more Cricut related crafts, let me know in the comments below because obviously I have one and I like doing crafts with it, but I know not everyone has one. So let me know if you guys are interested in seeing more of this. Now, of course, for those of you who don't have a Cricut, you can either handwrite on this yourself or outsource to a family member or friend with excellent penmanship. Also, is there anything more satisfying than watching a Cricut open? I don't think so. Next, I let the Cricut do its thing and get to cutting and uh, making that beautiful lettering for me. If there's one thing I've learned about using a Cricut, it's to make sure everything is as smooth as possible. Now, weeding off all of the extra vinyl, 
and weeding out all of the little center pieces. I don't know what they're called. The extra stickers in the middle of the letters and stuff. That's This process is called weeding to get all the extra stuff off. Applying my transfer tape on top, I stressed firmly and smoothly to make sure all of the letters adhere to the transfer tape. And if you guys are interested in the fonts, I'll go ahead and leave those below. Next, I take my time making sure it is centered on the escort card. Again, pressing firmly to help with the transfer. I've actually cut off a lot of time, um, basically because I spent about a year and a half making sure this was pressed firmly on there. And then pulling off the transfer tape. This is such a glorious moment, and I love the way this came together! Look at that. Does that not look like a professional did that? And here's why I love this project so very much. There are so many different color options. Honestly, at Hobby Lobby, there had to be, like, I don't know, 45 different colors. So these are just a handful of the ones that I picked up and some of the cards that I put together. And here's what they all look like. I can't tell which one is my favorite, to be totally honest. I love this one because it looks like marble. But then these black ones with the gold lettering are just like dreamy and moody. And look at how delicate that scripting is. Oh. So, as you can tell, I went a little crazy putting all these together. And now I have name tags for everything and everyone. And it's just, I'm going to be putting them everywhere always, forever. Everyone gets a name tag. You get a name tag. And you get a name tag. And you get a name tag. Ta-da! So what do you guys think? I'm just, I'm, 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 I can't. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Look at, look at, they're so gorgeous. They're so, so gorgeous. Honestly, when I stumbled on these in Hobby Lobby, I was like, oh my goodness, this looks like marble. Like, these look like marble. So I jumped on Etsy and did a quick search. And the cheapest ones I could find for either the Agat or Agate or Agate, whatever name cards are, um, to have those customized on Etsy was at the very least, $2 a piece. All supplies into this, not including the Cricut stuff, um, but you could also hand do this if you need to. All supplies into this, $24. And I can make 24 of these. And then if I decide to do more than 24, then that lessens the cost dramatically. So you get an escort card that doubles as a favor for a dollar or less. Yes, please sign me up. These puppies are so cute. And honestly, they look like marble. They honestly look like marble for a fraction of the cost. So one of the things I mentioned in the voiceover of the video is that there was a steep learning curve to this. I'm so happy that I dedicated one sheet of glass just to learn how much pressure I should be applying. And I would say a majority of the mistakes I made came from not using clamps to begin with. At first I was like, I can make straight lines all by my big girl self. I can't, I need help. And that's where the clamps and that straight edge came in. Once I started doing that, there was little to no mistakes. So if you start off with the clamps and the straight edge, I don't think you'll have as steep of a learning curve as I did. Another thing I would do if you guys are gonna replicate this is to get a specific sanding block for glass. They sell it on Amazon. I'm gonna go ahead and link it down below. I don't happen to need to do it for this video because it's just gonna sit there and look pretty on my tabletop or in a drawer somewhere because I can't let go of my DIYs. But, but if you are passing them out as favors, I do recommend getting one of those. The edges honestly are pretty much fine. Like I'm not worried about them at all, but you might want to sand them down just a little bit, just in case you have nice, soft, smooth edges. Do these take more time than buying them online? Of course, DIYs inherently take more time. Um, this is probably one of the more lengthy ones that I've done. However, the payoff that you get for the cost savings that you get, honestly, when I did the calculations, these were 50% or less than some of the custom ones I saw on Etsy, which to me, is a pretty big freaking deal. So if you guys are going to replicate this, please tag us on Instagram at JW Coordination. Speaking of Instagram and, you know, other platforms, we are still on for our 50K giveaway. If you guys haven't seen the details, I'm gonna go ahead and link the video right up here and check that out. So that's all we have for today, folks. Thank you so much for stopping by and for feeding my craft addiction because it's just so pretty. It's so pretty. And to be totally honest, like I definitely made these for my Thanksgiving table. So if y'all check out my fall decorate with me video later on this week, these are probably gonna make an appearance cause they're so pretty. <laughs> if you haven't done so already, like this video and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day bride. And until next week, bye guys.